I had just gotten out of work at 11 p.m. and was heading back to my house. It's about a 45 minute drive to get home usually, as I live several miles outside of the city. It's always very quiet and the roads are pretty empty once I start to get further out and closer to home. I always enjoyed the drives back from work. I found them peaceful and just a nice way to wind down after a long day. I was 20 minutes away from home and just turned down a long side road that pretty much leads directly to my house. This was my usual route home that I'd been taking for years now and I'd never had anything happen before. I will admit though, it was a bit of a creepy road at night. It was very dimly lit and the sides of the road were surrounded by a dense forest. Not to mention, it would often get foggy during the later hours of the night, making things only visible within a few feet ahead. Again though, barely anyone is on this road at night, and there's no turns or anything, so visibility is never too much of an issue. Though a couple minutes down the road, I see through the fog a small blinking light. I couldn't really tell how far ahead it was, or even what side of the road it was on. I slowed down, and as I started to get closer, the light turned off completely. At this point, I was maybe going 15 to 20 miles per hour, when out of the fog, a small car pulls out from the side of the road and stops directly in front of me. I tried to brake, but I was too close already, and my car tapped the back of theirs. I was kind of in shock at first as to how suddenly it all happened but I noticed neither of our cars really had much damage. Not really knowing what to do, I opened my door and stood beside my car, waiting for them to get out as well. I could see them moving around in the front seat, but I couldn't tell what they were doing. As I stood there, I looked at his car, noticing how old and worn it was and that the headlights were all turned off. Eventually, a man got out of the car slowly and began making his way over to me. From what I could see, he looked like a middle-aged man and was a pretty large guy. I decided to start off and asked, Is everything okay? You pulled out pretty quick. He was acting a little strange, and looking all around and never making eye contact with me. After a couple seconds, he replied, Yeah, sorry. I wasn't really sure how to respond, but he was starting to really make me uncomfortable, and I didn't want to be out on an empty road alone with him. I told him that there was no real damage to either car, so I was going to get back on the road and head home. But as I began reaching for my car door, he told me to wait. He told me he wanted to check his car out for damage before I left. I said okay and stood next to my car as he looked at his back bumper, but then he started to walk around his car, pretending to look at it for damage, which was really weird because I had only tapped his back bumper. As he started to make his way to the passenger side, I saw a large figure get up in the back seat and start moving towards the door. I immediately got in my car and locked it as a man got out of the back door. Both of them began waving their hands at me, telling me to stop. I was panicking at this point and put the car in drive and went around them down the road. Looking in the rearview mirror, I could see their lights turn on through the fog. I could see their lights for about 30 seconds, but eventually they faded out. I pulled into a gas station that was about 5 minutes from my house and waited there just to make sure that they didn't follow me home but the car never passed by. After waiting for 15 minutes, I headed home. I decided not to call the cops at the time, as I wasn't entirely sure if I was just overreacting or not. I'm still not sure what those people really wanted, but the more I think about it, everything about that situation felt wrong. I don't know what their plan was, but part of me feels like something very dangerous was about to happen if I had not gotten out of there in time. Another part of me wishes I had reported the incident, as I find myself wondering, what if they had stopped following me so that they could try and lure someone else into their trap?
I used to work for a small trucking company that would deliver frozen product to stores across several states. For the most part, I would do three or four deliveries before heading back to the warehouse and then home. Every once in a while, though, we would have a long delivery route where we would end too far to head back that same day, so we would have to sleep somewhere overnight before heading back. Usually, I'd just pull the truck into a truck stop and rest for a few hours and then get back on the road. Anyways, I was scheduled for a long delivery this day, and I knew I wouldn't get back until pretty late the next day. I got ready and headed out. Nothing happened the whole way there. I drove down, unloaded the truck, and started heading back. It was pretty late, though, around 1 in the morning. I figured I should rest for an hour or two before continuing all the way back. The last sign I saw for a truck stop said 40 miles ahead, so I still had a bit before getting there. I tend to space out for long periods of time when driving down long straight roads especially this late at night when nobody else is on the road. Though, I saw something flicker in my side mirror. I looked over and noticed headlights shining from right behind the trailer, but I couldn't see the car at all. This usually means that the car is in my blind spot because it's too close to the back for me to see. I continued down the road at the same speed, waiting for the car to get into the other lane and pass me but to my surprise, he stayed right behind me. This was starting to really bother me, as I knew if I had to brake for any reason, this guy was for sure going to hit me. The truck stop was just a few miles ahead though, so I tried to ignore them for the rest of the way there. Finally, I see the sign for the rest area and start to pull in. As I'm turning, I check my mirror and I see the car slow down a little, but then he continues to follow me into the parking lot. I honestly wasn't sure what to think at this point, but I figured I must have accidentally cut him off a while back, and he just wanted to yell at me about it. I've gotten a lot of angry drivers in my years of trucking, so I was pretty used to it, but I've never had anyone follow me like this. I pulled into an open spot and shifted into park. The car slowly trailed behind me, and continued to get closer and closer to the back before eventually stopping. Again, he was too close for me to see him, but at this point it was getting too weird. I got out and started walking around to the back to question them, though almost as soon as I slammed my driver door shut, they put it in reverse and drove away in a rush. I couldn't see too well, but I could tell it was an older man and the car was white and rusted all over. It looked pretty similar to one of those old police cars with the front bumper bars and everything. I stood out there by the back of the truck for a couple of minutes, making sure everything was securely locked and that he didn't come back. Then I got back in the truck and turned it off. I double-checked all the doors to make sure that they were locked, and did one quick glance out all the windows for any more cars. Then I laid back and closed my eyes. I woke, hearing a bang echo through my trailer. I checked my watch, seeing it had been almost two hours, and was a little past 3 a.m. Then there was another bang, but this time louder. I looked over in the side mirror and saw a very faint shadow moving around towards the back. This time I got pretty freaked out. I grabbed a small knife that I kept in the middle compartment and started making my way to the back, but this time I left the driver door open as to not make any noise. As I got closer, I crouched down a little and looked under the trailer. I could clearly see someone standing right up against the back of the truck and their car just behind them with its headlights off. Once I saw that, a rush of fear ran through my body and I decided not to approach any further and instead shouted out to them. My voice was a little shaky, but it seemed to do the trick. They rushed into their car and sped off. Looking at the back door, there were scratches all over the lock and clear marks as if he was trying to cut it open. 
I looked around to see if any other trucks could have seen the incident, but the lot was pretty empty. After a couple minutes, I ended up just getting back on the road and headed home. Nothing else happened for the rest of the trip. I've always assumed the man was just trying to steal from my trailer, but obviously he didn't know that I was on my way back from a delivery and the whole trailer was empty. Anyways, it's still the most unnerving thing to happen to me during my years of trucking, and I still get paranoid sometimes with a feeling that a car might be following right behind me without me even knowing. I was attending a popular concert in the south side of Chicago last year. As most of you probably know, it's a pretty sketchy area down there, and the crime rate is really high. But the tickets were really cheap, and the concert was well populated, so I felt pretty safe. Plus, I decided to go with a couple of my friends. The concert was great, and we all really enjoyed ourselves, but we knew the drive out would be pretty bad with all the traffic. It was almost 10pm by the time we got out of the parking lot and onto the main road. We realized pretty quick though that we were going to be on this road for a while as the cars were barely even moving forward. Sitting there, my friends started to look up other routes to get back to our town and they found one that could hopefully get us past all this traffic. After sitting in basically the same spot for 30 minutes, we agreed we would try the other route. We turned off the main road as soon as we could and began going through neighborhood streets. Surprisingly, there were a lot of people outside this late at night, just walking around or standing in their yards. This wasn't normal from where we lived, which was just a couple hours west. As we continued down these neighborhood streets, we began to notice that the people outside would watch us as we drove by. And then we also started to realize that we hadn't seen any other cars in probably 20 minutes. This got us a little bit nervous, and we all started to pay more attention. I asked one of my friends to check where the nearest main road was, and as he was scrolling through the map, my other friend pointed out a car at the end of the street that we were on. It was parked sideways, blocking both lanes of the road. I stopped the car immediately, and backed out and got onto the road that we were on previously, then continued down there. We began to panic a little bit, trying to find a safe way out to a more public area with other cars. But just a few seconds later, we again saw at the end of the road a sideways car blocking both lanes. I stopped the car, and I looked over at my friends. We were all looking at each other, clueless of what to do. It was too dark, and we couldn't tell if anyone was in the car up ahead, so we didn't want to approach it. As we were discussing our options, two men came up from one of the houses off the street. One of them stood behind the car, and the other one came up to my window. He signaled with his hands for me to roll down the window, and nervously, I rolled it down just a few inches. The man looked at each of us and scanned the inside of the car then asked me where we were headed. Just back to the highway, I said. He nodded and looked over at his friend, who started to walk over to the passenger side. There was a small moment where it felt like everything went silent and nobody moved. Then suddenly, both men grabbed the doors, trying to open them repeatedly. I reacted as fast as I could, putting the car in reverse as everyone was screaming. Just as I started to back out, the man tried to stick his arm through the gap in the window and even got stuck for a second as I pulled the car back before slamming to the ground. I turned around and floored it out of the street and went back to the way we came. We were all in total shock. I tried to stay calm, but I was shaking uncontrollably. We all agreed we would go back to the same way we came and just get on the highway from there. I think we were all pretty shaken by the situation, but I do think that I handled it pretty well. Luckily our doors were locked though, 
Because I'm not sure if I'd be here right now if they weren't. This happened a couple years ago. I'm a young female and I'd just turned 16 and I'd gotten my driver's license. I didn't have my own car, but I was able to borrow my parents' car whenever they didn't need it. Gas was pretty cheap at the time, and driving was so new to me that I really enjoyed it. On weekends, I used to love driving through somewhere and getting food late at night, then just driving all around town while listening to music. I think it felt so nice because I'd actually get to be alone, which is not very common when living with your parents. One weekend, I think on a Saturday, I took my parents' car out. I drove through a 24-hour McDonald's to get a drink and a snack, then started driving around. I never had a planned route, I just drove wherever I felt like, but for the most part, I tried to avoid anywhere that would have a lot of other cars around. There were a lot of back roads in my town that went between neighborhoods, but nobody ever really used them because the main roads were quicker. I turned down one of these roads that led to a really nice neighborhood with expensive houses. But not very long down the road, headlights flashed to my mirrors and I saw a car coming up behind me. They were flashing their lights on and off. There were no other cars, so they had to be signaling to me, but I didn't know why. This went on for a whole minute, until they started speeding up and getting closer to the back of my car. I was still relatively new to driving, and didn't know how to deal with this or what to do, so I just kept driving. I was hoping to reach the neighborhood and maybe pull over in a less discreet area, but my plans were cut short. The car behind me backed off slightly, then I heard their engine revving, and they sped up, ramming into the back of my car. My car jerked forward, and I was stunned for a second, but it didn't seem to do any serious damage. There was a lot going through my mind at that point. I was scared and nervous about pulling over, but I also didn't want to bring my parents' car home damaged without even getting the other driver's insurance information. I pulled the car to the side and put it in park. The car behind me pulled off as well, parking their car really close to my bumper. They flashed their lights again. I didn't know whether to stay in my car or get out. I was just in such an uncomfortable position with no idea how to handle this. After a few seconds, I opened my door and stepped out. Their windows were hard to see through, so I couldn't see who was inside. I walked to the back of my car and tried to see what the damage looked like, but they had parked so close that it was hard to get a good view. Then I heard their door open. I looked and saw a man getting out and looking at me. He was smiling with a friendly face and did a polite wave as he walked toward me. I was expecting an angry man to start yelling at me or say that I cut him off earlier or something. But this was an odd surprise. Sorry about your car. I must have not been paying attention, he said, still in a friendly manner. It's alright. Can I just get your insurance info? He looked away, then looked back at me. Sure, it's right in my car. He pointed at the passenger door like he wanted me to go over there. He just stayed where he was, looking at me like I was supposed to go. After a long, awkward pause, I told him I was just going to go home because the damage didn't seem so bad. I didn't know what this man was on, but something didn't feel right. Oh, you can't drive that home, or you'll damage it more. Come with me, I'll give you a ride. He took a few steps closer to me. His smiling face and friendly remarks were really creepy. My car definitely wasn't too damaged to drive either, and offering me a ride was just inappropriate in this circumstance. I said no, then started walking quickly to my car, but the man grabbed my arm firmly and stopped me in my tracks. Come on, the crash must have gotten you confused, he said, starting to pull me back. 
Okay, okay, I'll go with you, I said, getting him to let go of me. I followed him to his car and slowly walked to the passenger side while he entered the driver's seat. Right when he shut his door, I sprinted back to my car. I heard him get out, but I slammed my door and locked it before he could reach me. He pressed his body up against the window and stared at me for a second, then ran back to his car. I drove away, and in the mirrors, I saw him make a three-point turn and exit in the opposite direction. When I got home, I woke my dad up and told him what happened. He told me that I never should have stopped. He called the police, but the man was never identified. I'll never know what that man was trying to do or where he was going to take me. I just fear that someone else might not have been as lucky as I was. It was between 2 and 3 a.m. and I was doing a delivery. I worked at a 24-hour Italian restaurant, so we delivered pastas, soups, and pizzas frequently. We didn't have designated delivery drivers, but would just figure it out once the order comes in. This was a small, single meal order that was just 15 minutes from the restaurant. I assume 15 minutes is on the longer side of deliveries for most other places, but our owner was greedy and had us accept orders from up to 30 minutes away. I was listening to music and relaxing, going down a long straight road, when I saw a figure. They were right in the middle of my lane. I slowed down. And as I got closer, they started waving their arms in the air, running toward my car. I was in a one-lane road, and there were cars in the oncoming traffic lane, so I had to stop and wait for them to pass before I could go around. The guy ran up to my car and started banging on my window. He started yelling, saying he was out of gas and just needed some help. He was so aggressive with the way he was asking for help, though. It was just weird. As soon as the other cars passed, I turned a bit to the right so as to not run over the guy's feet, then sped off. The guy looked like he was trying to chase my car down the road, so I thought he might have been drunk. But, 20 seconds down the road, there was a blue pickup truck on the side. I thought maybe the guy wasn't lying, but the way he went about asking for help was crazy. After a couple minutes, I'd stopped thinking about it and relaxed for the rest of the drive. I pulled into the customer's driveway and brought the food up to their door. After they finished paying with cash, I thanked them and started back to my car. As I walked down the driveway, I saw a car parked down the street with its lights on. My stomach dropped. It was that same blue pickup truck I'd seen earlier. It wasn't there when I came down the street before, so it had just gotten there. I got back in my car and looked at my rearview mirror for a minute, then started backing out because I couldn't stay in the customer's driveway for too long without it being weird. I started driving down the street toward the truck. As I passed them, I could see that same crazy guy staring at me in the driver's seat. I stepped on the pedal harder to get out of there quicker but in my rearview mirror, I saw the truck make a U-turn and start heading down the road toward me. The whole way back to the restaurant was a long straight road with few cars or places to stop. A minute down this road, I saw that truck appear behind me. This guy was insane, and I remember thinking about how crazy he was when he stopped me in the middle of the road. What was he trying to do? It was a terrifying thought. I reached for my phone in my pocket and carefully dialed 911 as the truck was gaining on me quickly. I told the operator that I was being followed by some crazy guy in a blue pickup truck and gave them the road I was on and the direction I was going. They said a patrol officer was just two minutes down the road from me and told me to remain calm and continue driving until I see them. I did as they said, but only a few seconds later. The truck sped up and went into the oncoming traffic lane to pass me. I slammed on my brakes just as they swerved in front of me to block me off. I stopped just a couple inches from hitting the side of the truck. My heart was pounding and I was in a state of shock. 
Then I heard their car door open, and footsteps running around the truck and over to my car. I was shaking, trying to put it in reverse. The man ran up and started banging on my window again, yelling and screaming. I backed away, and after a moment, the man ran back to his truck. That's when I saw flashing red and blue lights from ahead. The truck swerved back around and passed me as the patrol car chased him down the road. I was later informed that the man was eventually caught. What makes this even more terrifying is that along with both drugs and alcohol, they found rope and handcuffs in the back seat of his car. I was seeing my family over the holidays and went on a short road trip to and from my parents' house. I stayed for just over a week, then I left to go back home on a Tuesday afternoon around 3 o'clock. The first hour was full of driving through the city, then another hour of going through the suburbs before it was just a long, narrow highway. By 10 p.m., the road was completely empty. I was also getting tired, and my eyes were getting heavy. I turned off my music because that was just making me more sleepy. As I was trying to focus on staying awake, I saw a small light glimmer in the road ahead. It was the reflection of my headlights shining on a car that was parked on the side of the road. I slowed down to pass it. It looked abandoned, but it was dark and their windows were tinted. Getting stuck all the way out here would be awful since the nearest town was an hour back. I kept my eyes open in case someone was walking on the side, but a couple minutes down the road, I saw another light. It was in the mirror, but it was blindingly bright. So much so that I couldn't even see the car at all, just their lights. They had to be somewhat close, so I started slowing down a little so they could pass me, but then I saw something up ahead. A car parked right in the middle of the road, blocking the entire road. The lights were off too, so I didn't see it until I was close. I stopped as soon as I saw it, but the light in the mirrors got brighter. I could hear them coming up behind me. I started to turn my car around, but then I saw the car behind me had parked diagonally across the road, blocking my way back. It all came together to me at that instant. I heard multiple doors open and close. When I looked around, I saw at least three people running at me. I was in a full panic. I drove off the road and into the trees, trying to maneuver around them and get back onto the other side of the road around the cars. I was focusing so hard on not hitting a tree or getting stuck, I wasn't even checking if they were chasing me. As I was making my way around though, maybe 10 seconds after I'd driven off the road, a gunshot went off, hitting somewhere in front of my car. I was shaking and panicking and accidentally grazed the side of a tree as I was making my way back up to the road. Another shot went off, this time hitting the back of my car as I got back on the road and drove away. Once I was a good distance away from the scene, I tried to call the police, but my phone was completely out of service. I was going well over the speed limit, knowing there was no safety nearby. After 10 minutes of driving, I was able to get enough reception to call the police. Thankfully, the attackers didn't seem to chase me past the scene though. They never located them as far as I know. I hope they were only planning on robbing people, but the way they were set up in the middle of nowhere and were willing to use their guns makes me think they were planning on something much worse. I was driving for DoorDash on the weekend to make some extra money. I worked a day job so I could only start driving later in the night. When I started, it was a little past 9. I got my first order and dropped it off, then drove back to where the restaurants were. I drove in circles for a while, maybe 10 minutes without getting a single order. 
It was late, but on the weekends there would usually still be a decent amount of orders. Finally one popped up and I accepted it, though it was a small order with a small tip. After that one, I waited in a parking lot for almost 20 minutes before the next order came through. Obviously, this wasn't ideal, having to wait so long between orders and not even getting to choose which orders to accept unless I wanted to wait even longer. This order was another small one, but some money was better than none, so I accepted it. I picked up their bag from Taco Bell and counted the items to make sure it was right. Two tacos and some packets of hot sauce. That was it. The delivery fee was probably more expensive than the food. I confirmed that I picked up the order, then got the directions to the house. It was ten minutes away in some regular neighborhood. A few minutes into the drive, I pulled up to a red light. There was almost nobody on the road at this time of night, so I was just sitting at this empty intersection, waiting for it to turn green, when a truck pulled up next to me. I unconsciously looked over slightly, but the man in the truck caught my attention enough to make me turn my head fully. He was sticking his head out of the window and looking down into my car. Not at me, but at my passenger seat, which had the DoorDash bag in it. I looked back and saw the light was green, so I pressed on the gas. I had no idea why he was looking in my car, but he made it very obvious and didn't even try to hide it. I checked my mirrors and the truck was now in my lane, cruising a good distance behind me. As I continued driving along my route, the truck stayed behind me, but I couldn't say for sure if he was following me or not because the route was straight all the way until the neighborhood. When I turned in, I stared at my mirrors, waiting anxiously for the truck to pass the entrance. But after 10 seconds, he turned in behind me. There was a chance he just lived here, and I knew that, but after seeing him looking in my car, I felt like I was justified in my suspicions. The route had me go down a few turns in the neighborhood, before taking me down to the last road with the address on it. I turned, and right away, I saw the dead end sign a few houses down. I braked and pulled over, staring at my rear view mirror. The truck pulled in behind me and parked. As I waited in my car, trying to come up with a plan, the truck behind me was just sitting there with its headlights on. Then I got a text. It was from the DoorDash customer asking when the delivery would be arriving. This was all coming together, and I realized that the man in the truck, likely my customer, was waiting for me to get out of my car. Even though I knew what was going on, I still had no way of getting out of it. After a minute of me panicking to figure an escape, the man got out of his truck. He walked down to my car, but stopped right by the trunk. I watched in my mirror as he stood there, looking at me through the back windshield. It was a tense moment, making my head panic with thoughts. Then all of a sudden, he slammed something into the windshield, shattering it. I put the car in drive and floored it, just as the man jumped onto the back and tried to crawl in through the broken glass. He fell off as I made a tight U-turn, and with the time it took for him to get up, I was able to carefully maneuver between his truck without any more damage. I saw him wobble across the street as I left and called 911. When police got there, all they found were the broken shards of glass laying in the road. I'm very thankful to have made it out with nothing but a broken windshield. But that night had me shaken up for months. I just hope he's not out there trying to trap more people and do who knows what to them. I'm an Uber driver, mainly working in a large suburb outside Las Vegas. 
The city is a bit sketchy sometimes, but this suburb is known for being a nicer area, so I never found myself worrying too much. Sure, I'd get some weird people sometimes, but they were usually just drunk, high, or otherwise intoxicated in some way. I'd worked for a few months with no issues and found myself actually enjoying the job. On this night, I was working around my usual time between 6 and 10 p.m. It was one of those nights where I was getting a lot of people and making a lot of money. When 10 o'clock came around, I chose to keep grinding out these pickups and make as much as I could. The very next order after 10 was from someone 18 minutes away at an undefined location. This wasn't out of the ordinary. It usually just meant they were on the side of a road somewhere or outside of some place that wasn't on the map. I zoomed in and saw it was right next to a storage garage. I began the drive and when I was five minutes away, I got a call from the customer. I'm gonna be late. I need you to wait a few minutes for me. Thanks. He said quickly while breathing heavily like he just ran a mile. The man hung up right after. I can't say I'd ever had someone tell me that they were going to be late, but I didn't mind waiting a few minutes. I knew if I cancelled it, then he'd have to wait another 10 to 20 minutes for a new driver to get there, and I was hoping that by waiting, he'd give me a little extra tip money. When I arrived, I didn't see anyone outside, so I pulled in and parked in the storage garage parking lot. I waited for 5 minutes, then I saw a man in my mirror. He was walking quickly out of the storage building, holding a large duffel bag. When he got my car, a nasty odor came from him. I also saw that he was dripping in sweat, and it was really gross. I'd picked up people from the gym before, so this wasn't too terrible, but it never made for a good experience. I tried to not make a face and greeted him. The man said nothing, so I got back on the road. During the ride, the man held the duffel bag on his lap and stared forward without speaking a word. It made me feel uncomfortable, so I didn't speak either. After a 20 minute drive of awkwardness, I finally got to the destination. It was a corner of a street, not an address. Before I could even shift into park, the man hurried out and started walking away. After all that, I wasn't expecting any sort of tip, which was a disappointment, and enough so to get me to call it quits for the night. During my drive home, I noticed that smell never left my car, even when I tried rolling the windows down. It was so bad that I had to pull over and check to see if he had left something in the back seat. I opened the door and immediately saw some red spots on the seat. I'm no expert but it looked like blood. I called the police and after some looking, they confirmed that it was, and there was a lot of it. We tried to track the Uber account, and the next day, they even contacted the storage unit, but had no luck with identifying the man. After thinking back on all of it though, I'm sure that guy did something terrible just minutes before I picked him up. I mean, he was sweating and carrying a duffel bag with blood soaked into it. And on top of all that, he used fake accounts with both Uber and the storage unit. It really showed me that even in a place that's considered to be nice and safe, there's still terrible people doing terrible things. I took a week off from Uber, then got back to it, but I'm way more cautious about who I'm picking up. I'm a truck driver for a moving company on the East Coast. We specialize in cross-country moving, typically moving people to the far West Coast, which can take anywhere from 20 to 40 hours depending on the locations. I only did the driving for the company, not any of the boxing or loading, so the actual job was 100% just driving and picking up or dropping off the trailer at the houses. I'd been working with this company for almost four years at the time. This job was like every other. I got to the pickup address and loaded up the trailer full of the customer's belongings. 
This was a 30 hour drive in total, which I would do with two to three short rest stops. The hardest states to drive through are in the Midwest, specifically Iowa and Nebraska. There's absolutely nothing there, it's just dead roads with endless fields of grass beside them. It makes for a very boring, and therefore tiring, drive. As I passed through the Iowa border into Nebraska, the sun had just set and I'd been on the road for about 20 hours. I took a short break already a couple states back, but was just about ready for another. My eyes were heavy and I could feel the drowsiness coming in, but a few more miles down, I saw something on the side of the road. A car was stopped off to the side of my lane with its headlights on. It was a narrow road, so I slowed down to carefully pass. As I did, I noticed the exhaust was steaming, so the car was still running. There was also a man leaning against the driver door and looking right at me. I passed by and gave him a nod, but as I got further down the road, I saw him get back into the car. It was very strange for someone to be sitting on the side of an empty road with a car that still runs. He didn't look like he was in any sort of trouble. He looked like he was waiting. I checked my mirrors often, but the car's headlights disappeared behind me after a few minutes. I was a bit more awake now, but my eyes still felt heavy. Only a mile or so more down the road, I saw another car. This one was sideways in the middle of the road, and as I got closer, I saw another vehicle on the side. It was a large box van. I wasn't sure exactly of the situation, but seeing that gave me a bad feeling. I eased into my brakes, but the car stayed in the middle of the road, so I was forced to come to a full stop. I was maybe 20 yards away and could see multiple men standing along the road and one man in front of the car. I'd have to be the dumbest person in the world to not understand what this was at this point. With no better options, I started moving the truck backward. The men stayed where they were with this horrifying confidence. Then a light shined behind me and a car approached, blocking the way back. A man got out of the car, sprinting at the back of my trailer, and at the same time, all of the men in the front started sprinting at me too. In that instant, my mind went blank and all of my adrenaline took over. I slammed on the gas as I heard a pop on the back of the trailer and the doors swung open. The men in front yelled and tried to stand in my way, but once they saw I wasn't stopping, they jumped on the side of the road. I rammed right into the car, knocking it off the road and completely destroying it. A few gunshots sounded in the distance, but none hit. I could hear cargo falling out of the trailer for the next five miles before I was able to call the police and meet an officer on the road. Of course, this was a total mess, but as it all unfolded, it turned out to be much more than just a random attack and robbery. When police arrived at the scene, the car I'd slammed into was left behind, being damaged beyond drivable. With it, they tracked down one of the members of the attackers who gave up information on the others. They had information on the rich homeowners that were moving and planned to stop me and steal all of the belongings with their box van. They never said what exactly they would have done to me after they robbed the truck but I don't think it's a stretch to assume that it would have been a lot easier for them to not leave any loose ends. I was on a road trip to meet up with a best friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a couple years. He had just bought a home in Montana, so it was a great excuse to hang out for a while and catch up on life. The drive was 10 hours from where I lived, and due to work schedules, I ended up leaving home at 8pm to drive overnight and arrive sometime around 6am. 
I was tired from having worked the whole day before leaving, and being alone on the road made it hard to keep my eyes open. I knew it was going to be a struggle, but after a few hours of driving, I was struggling much more than I'd anticipated. By 1am, it was becoming dangerous how sleepy I was getting, so I was going to pull over at the next town and find a parking lot to rest in for a few hours. But as I continued driving, there was nothing but road for miles and miles. I must have fully dozed off, because the next thing I knew, I was halfway in a ditch slamming on my brakes. Thankfully, I had woken up in time to stop from hitting any trees or causing serious damage to my car, but I was way off the side of the road. After taking a moment to collect myself, I got out and assessed the situation. It was very dark outside, with only the headlights from my car providing light, but the situation did not look good. I had veered a few feet off the road into a steep ditch that separated the road from the woods. I stepped onto the road and looked all the way down in both directions, but it was completely dark both ways, no signs of anything nearby. Still trying to keep myself calm, I went back to my car and tried to reverse out of the ditch, but it wouldn't even budge. The angle my car was in, my back tires had no traction at all. I pulled out my phone, and by some miracle, I had one bar of service. I called 911, and though the connection was choppy, I got the message across. They said they could have an officer with a winch down to help me in about two hours. I waited in my car for a while, looking between the road and the empty woods around me, getting kind of creeped out the more I thought of how remote I was. After 30 minutes, I laid back in my seat and tried to catch some sleep. Unfortunately, the whole situation had me too shaken to fall asleep though. I sat up and looked around again, not seeing any lights on the road. But just before I looked away, I barely made out a shape on the other side of the road. Just 20 or 30 feet from my car, a truck was parked with all of its lights off. I never heard or saw them pull up, but I knew they weren't there before. It was too dark to see any details, but I knew the police would have had their lights on for sure. So why was this truck stopped out here, right by me in the middle of nowhere, with all of its lights off? I stared at it for at least five minutes, not seeing any movement or signs of someone being inside it. A chill ran through me, and I decided to call the police for an update on their location. But as I turned and reached back for my phone, a figure was standing at my passenger window, they were peering into my car, looking directly at me. His soulless eyes showed that he had no intent to help me. The shock of it all had me frozen in fear. The man then walked around my car and stared at me again through my window. Seeing him just a foot away from me with only the thin glass between us was the most terrified I'd ever felt. The man tested the door handle a couple times before saying something under his breath and hitting the window in frustration. He turned around and called something out in a different language, like he was telling someone to do something. He then turned back and started looking through the other windows. I was in a complete panic, breathing heavily and preparing for whatever was to happen next. But then I heard and saw the truck speeding away. The man by my car looked over like he was surprised and ran up to the road. After a second, he immediately sprinted past my car and disappeared in the woods. Moments later, I saw flashing red and blue lights coming up in the distance. I told the officer what had happened, but of course the man and whoever was in the truck had gotten away with no evidence left behind other than the eerie shoe prints leading into the woods. All in all, I made it to my friend's house safely afterwards, but there have not been any updates on the men. I think I had barely gotten away just moments before something terrible. Before I get into this next story, I want to talk about an important sponsor for today's video. Aura is an advanced online digital security service, allowing you to scan and remove your personal data from various online sources, 
including scam centers, the dark web, and data brokers. These entities profit from your private information, making it crucial to eliminate your data from their reach. And Aura makes it as simple as possible for us to do this. With their free trial, I was registered in minutes and had Aura scan and remove my data with just a few clicks. They notified me about dozens of places all across the internet where they found my personal data, like my full name, phone number, and address. And without Aura, I never would have known. Afterwards, Aura continuously monitors my data, instantly notifying me of any issues that arise and enabling swift resolution. They also include a feature to encrypt your home's Wi-Fi, ensuring the security of all your connected devices. In today's world, personal identity and data theft are unfortunately widespread, affecting a significant number of US citizens, with millions falling victim each year, resulting in huge financial losses. With Aura, you can have the utmost confidence in your security and prevention measures. For a completely free 14-day trial, visit aura.com slash whispered or scan the provided QR code. During this trial, you can discover if your personal data has been compromised, remove your data from multiple prominent platforms, and securely monitor your personal identity. I highly recommend using this free trial to see if your data has been stolen and to keep your identity secure. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video and keeping our personal data secure. I took up a job at a popular pizza restaurant last year for evening shifts after school. I just wanted some money to pay for my bad eating habits, and this was a familiar place, so I didn't think twice about taking the job. It was a chill place to work, and most of the other workers were students like me. This happened on one of my Friday shifts, and it still has been the only strange occurrence that's happened to me on the job. I had just picked up a couple orders to deliver, and got in the car to start heading to the first address. On busy nights, we usually grab multiple orders and deliver them in one drive to save time, so this was nothing unusual. I typed in the first address and started the 10 minute drive. It was just past 10pm, so the roads were bare and I was able to relax a bit. It's worth mentioning that I didn't live in a huge city, but rather a smaller and older town, so most of the houses were beat up and old, but it was normal for the area. When I pulled up to the address, it was just as all the others looked. It was a small one-story home with overgrown bushes around it. I got the pizza and walked up to the porch, knocking and waiting for them to answer. I gave it a couple minutes before I called the customer's cell phone they had provided, but it went straight to voicemail. They still had to pay, so I couldn't leave it on the porch for them, and after waiting for nearly five minutes, I got back in my car and searched up the next address. Right as I read it though, it was weirdly familiar. It was on the same street, but looking around, this street didn't seem to have any other houses on it. There was another road connecting to it, but I could clearly see that there was a barricade blocking it off. After searching the address on multiple direction apps, I got the same answer, which was that it was down that dead end road. I drove my car up to the barricade, which was just a couple cones with a wooden beam running between them, and far off in my headlights, I could see another house. I looked again at the barricade, and it wasn't clear whether it was an official roadblock or just a homemade thing they set up to keep solicitors or through traffic away. I pulled out my phone and called the customer, which, even weirder, was the same number as the previous order, but this time, they answered. Hey, I have a pizza delivery for you, but the address I have is blocked off. The man responded charismatically, apologizing, and telling me to just lift the wooden beam off the cones and drive down the road. He went on about annoying people mistaking his driveway for a public road, and apologized once more before hanging up. Reluctantly, I lifted up the wooden beam and laid it flat on the ground, then drove up the gravel driveway. Pulling up, I saw one light was on downstairs, and a figure was in the window, looking through the curtains. I got out and gave a short wave to them as I walked up. The figure moved away from the window, going toward the front door as I approached the house. 
When I got to the porch, I waited for them to open the door, knowing they saw me coming up. But after 30 seconds, I gave it a knock. Still, nobody answered. I started to get a little uneasy and felt a weird, uncomfortable sense. I stepped back and called the customer, but this time it went straight to voicemail again. I don't know if it was me being paranoid or some sixth sense I was getting, but I got this urge to go right back to my car and drive away. As I got back to the end of the driveway, I had to floor my brakes. The wooden beam was set back up again on the cones, blocking the road. I quickly got out and knocked it over, jumping back in my car and driving out of there. If things weren't freaky enough, while I pulled out of the road, I saw the flicker of headlights turn on behind me, following for several minutes until I got onto the main road. From what I could see, they never left the neighborhood. When I got back to the restaurant, I told my manager, who called the police for me, which I admittedly wouldn't have done. Still, nothing was found. It did turn out that the two homes the pizzas were ordered to were vacant, empty houses that weren't even for sale or anything. To this day, I don't know if it was just some sick joke with no harm intended, or if they were plotting some gruesome attack. But thankfully, my instinct saved me from having to find that out. I drive a van for work, delivering products to a few family-owned stores around my city. On a night just four months ago, I was driving my route between three stores to do some after-hour deliveries. It was about 11 p.m. and I had just finished the last delivery for the night. From there, the warehouse I had to drop the van off was 30 minutes away. I drove for maybe five minutes until a car pulled up behind me at an intersection. There were no other cars out, just me and them. When the light turned green, I started driving, and it wasn't until a few more minutes down the road that I realized they were still right behind me. I was in a big slow van, so most people would just go around me, but they didn't. I wasn't worried or anything, but it was odd. As we continued driving, their headlights steadily got brighter and brighter until they were so close that the light was being blocked by the back of my van. They had to be just a foot or two away from my bumper. The lane next to us was open, so they could easily just go around, but instead, they chose to tailgate me, which then started making me nervous. I slowed down to a stop sign and was going to turn just to get away from them, but just as I stopped, the car behind me bumped into my van. The crash wasn't bad, but it was enough to shake the whole van and push me forward a bit, which I knew had to cause some damage. I put my van in park and unbuckled, about to get out to see the damage, but a man was already at my window. He was smiling and motioning to talk to me. I opened the door, and as I stepped out, I saw two more guys at the back of my van, both looking at me. The man started to give excuses as we walked over to look at the bumper, but it became obvious that he was very drunk. His words were hard to make out, and he didn't seem very bothered about crashing into me at all. The other guys looked intoxicated too, just from how they were moving, but I didn't know for sure. My van and his car looked a lot worse than I thought. I asked the man for his insurance and went to get mine, but when I got back, I realized none of them had moved. I asked again for his insurance, but all of them just looked at me without saying anything. There was this moment of me looking at them as they stared at me in silence before my heart started racing. I turned to run back to my van, but instantly, I heard all of their footsteps coming up behind me. I didn't even make it to the door before one of them grabbed me and shoved me against the side of the van. The one holding me was making threats while the others went back and forth piling up everything in their car. After a minute of having my head pressed against the side, he shoved me away and started forcing me to walk toward their car. The other guys finished taking what they could and got in the car, telling the man behind me to hurry up as he opened the back door and tried pushing me into the back seat. 
I knew that if I let him get me in that car, I would likely never be seen again. I put all of my strength into fighting back, doing everything I could to make it as difficult as possible to get me inside. After a 20 second struggle, he tossed me away and got in himself. Then they drove off. I got up and ran to get my phone from the center console, then called the police. The men who attacked me couldn't be identified, and still haven't been, and it was hard to say if it was a one-time drunk attack or something they had done before. What they plan to do by bringing me in the car with them is also a mystery, but I think we all know what would have been the most likely outcome.